Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of reliable group communication guys. So basically whenever I told you right, so in multiple videos we told that we want to replicate data, replicate data, replicate data, right? Yes. So basically replication and all those con all these concepts will indirectly depend on group of systems or group of processes, right? Yes. So if you update the value in one process or if you add some data in the first process, you need to add them in all the other processes so that the data will be consistent, right? So if you say that you are having five values, your friend should also have five values. If you are both are same, if you both have the same content in you, right? Yes. Okay, the example might not be a good one, but that's the thing, right? Yes. So he, they told that each and everyone will be having the equal number of chocolates. So you have seven and your have, friend is having five chocolates. Then that's not correct, right? Yes. If you both are having, you should have five or your friend should have seven. Then only the, both are equal, like five, five or seven, seven, right? Yes. So reliable multi-classing services guarantees that all messages are delivered to all the members in a proper way by using the group concept guys okay so the idea seems simple but implementing this is a really tricky guys when the number of systems increases as the number of clients or number of systems increases it becomes really tough to handle it guys okay so this is a small diagram guys in which there is a small example okay so here is the sender and he is sending the data so assume that currently he is sending okay i think the phone okay just give me a second Okay, sorry for that. Okay, so here assume that the message is the 25th packet or 25th segment he is sending guys. Okay, so he stored it in the buffer and he sent he sent it to the first system, second system and third system and fourth system in a single lane. So that is the reason why we are saying that it is sending the data to all, right? Yes. So in a single dedicated line, he sent it to each and every one and once they received it, so basically assume here. So the last packet they received is 24, 24. Here it is a 23 and here it's 24. So for these three, 24, 25 it is nothing but the continuation packet. But here it is not the continuation packet. So in this type of situations, each and every one will respond with acknowledgement guys. So here it is saying that acknowledgement at what 25th packet. So it is saying that I received 25th packet. Thank you for sending. Similarly, here also it is saying acknowledgement for 25th packet. Yes. But whereas here it cannot accept 25th packet. Why? Because it needs 24th packet in between. That is missing somewhere. We don't know where it is missing. So that is the reason why you will be saying saying to the server or the sender that Mr. 24, please send me 24 again. Please, please, please. You'll be asking in that way. Okay. And again, the next next is also received. So that will also send acknowledgement. Okay, so in this situation, this receiver will get the fact packet as per its request, right? That is nothing but the thing, guys. So here, here we are using groups, right? Yes, reliable groups. Okay. Similarly, the only drawback here is nothing but scalability, guys. Okay. As the number of systems increases, it's really a complex thing to accept. So basically, if you observe here, okay. So here we are having only four systems, right? And the receive sorry sender should have a capacity of receiving four values at a time at a moment of time because all of them will send right at any time they can send. So that is the reason. If there are thousand systems in the network, there should be thousand acceptance here. That's a huge thing, right? Yes. So just by seeing this exam, seeing that idea only, you can say that scalability could be a disaster here, right? Yes. Okay, so the main problem with this reliability multicasting scheme just described is that it cannot support a large number of receivers. Okay, if there are n receivers, the sender must be prepared to accept at least n acknowledgement, guys. So basically, you should accept everyone, right? Okay, you are saying, yes, I got, yes, I got, yes, I got. So that's a huge issue, right? Yes. So to resolve this issue, we are using a small and simple idea, guys. So the idea is that so why should I send the data that I received the data? Can I, I can be silent also, right? Yes. So only the idea could be only the missing members will be sending the negative acknowledgement guys. Okay. So instead of missing 24, it will be sending NACK 24 negative acknowledgement for 24. It is indirectly saying that, okay, I did not got, I am not accepting this 25th packet and I got, I need 24th packet. So that is what it is saying like this. But the only disadvantage here is that, so assume that you sent 100 packets, so assume that you sent from 1 to 100, okay, and one of your receiver received all the packets, the three receivers received all the packets, and the last receiver did not receive the first packet only. He sent the message, the negative acknowledgement, but due to some congestion and all those things, the negative acknowledgement has been took too long, guys. Right. So now your current situation is at 100th packet, like there are almost 99 packets you passed already. Right. Yes. So now 
this guy is sending the negative acknowledgement for first packet means your first packet should be stored somewhere so the buffer should be stored the, all the values all the packets should be stored in the buffer hence you need a large buffer so that is the major drawback here guys so that is the reason why we will not use this mechanism okay yes so with the many receive receivers the sender may swap with the feedbacks swamped with the feedback that is overflowed guys this is nothing but swamped okay yes so one solution to this problem is not to have a receiver acknowledge the recipient of the message so basically the receiver so should not say that I got the message instead of them receiving returning sorry instead of the receivers returning the feedback they should only send whenever there is a negative value guys right yes so using this mechanism we could think it could be an advantage but the buffer size will not be infinite right so there is always a limited buffer so you cannot guarantee the received packets also that's also an issue so you will be thinking that okay one first packet is received by all second packet is received by all third packet is received by all if you don't get negative acknowledgement, but it could be delayed also, right? So that is an issue and the buffer size. So these are the two major issues here. Okay. So let us continue. Okay. So to resolve this issue, we will be using the concept of hierarchical feedback. Guys. So if you want to draw an example for this uh, scalability, this could be an example. guys. So if you observe here, here we got negative acknowledgements and all these acknowledgements are sent back, right? Yes. So in that way also it can be sent. Okay. So let us continue. Okay, so using the hierarchical structure, we can solve this issue guys. Okay, so the concept is nothing but each local coordinator forwards the message to its children and later handles the retransmission request. Okay, so basically this is the diagram as this is a small example you can take. So this is our root guys. Okay, so inside root only we are having multiple systems that is nothing but a local area network. Similarly, in the leaves or in the intermediate nodes also, we'll be having the same, like some kind of networks we can say, right? Or distributed systems you can say, right? Yes. So whenever there is an issue in this, it will be saying to its parent, guys. Like that, that will be the flow. In that way, it will be flowing. So in that way, the identification can be done. Guys, I'm not that much clear with the concept. That's the reason why I'm just giving you an idea here. Okay? Yes. So I hope everyone got some basic idea on this topic, right? Yes. So in the next lecture, we'll be discussing about a distributed commit, guys. Okay. Okay. So let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thanks for watching.